What's up, guys? This is Dirty Mike with Dirty Mike Crypto back with another video. Tonight, I have the pleasure of having Grant, the head of business operations from Corsac V2 on with me tonight. And he's going to answer uh, some of my questions here and tell you some about his project. And we're very excited to have him. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight, Grant. Yeah, thanks for having me, Mike. Awesome. We'll get right into it. Um, so how did you get involved with crypto to begin with? Uh, I got involved in crypto, uh, kind of a slow, interesting process. But the first time I heard about crypto it was a guy I worked with back in, uh, oh, geez, this would have been like 2012, 13, I want to say. And um, he's like, have you heard about this weird thing, uh, Bitcoin? I'm yeah. like, no, I have no idea what that is. He's like, apparently it's pretty cool. I'm like, okay, that's what is it? I don't really know. It's like this blockchain thing. I'm like, Okay. Well, yeah, it's like the, it's like the early days when <laughs> it's like the early days when the internet first came out. There, people were like, "Oh, have you heard of the internet yet? What is it?" I'm not sure. People just put their stuff on it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So fast forward a little bit, and then we get to like 2017, and I think it was right around when Coinbase became popular. And I said, "Okay, uh, I keep hearing about this." And that same buddy of mine had then gotten more attuned into the crypto scene and he's like oh you need to buy ethereum you really need to buy ethereum i'm like okay well i buy some ethereum and it was like right as it went up right before that point where we call it the crypto winter and when that crypto winter started i just kind of deleted the app and you know let it sit in there for a while and right. uh came, came back out and checked it like a year or two later and i was like oh i finally got my money back and then i you know sold that and maybe bought a couple others and just didn't really pay much attention to it. And then um, then just started getting into it recently uh, a lot more after I had some success with a nice bet on Shiba Inu. Yeah. 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 So uh, took, took my gains there and then said, okay, well, apparently there's ways to, you know, actually make notable sizable money in this space and uh just started searching around i'm like well, how do you really make money in this space you know and, and that's what i started asking myself i'm like i looked at the shiba inu and every time everybody invests in crypto they look at these charts and they say man if i would have just invested right there i'd be a millionaire right absolutely it's what shiba everybody does year last year yeah that was crazy last year I, I actually got in on shiba pretty early but i sold too early and yeah, I yeah. got caught with that. I did the same thing with Doge too. I wasn't very early with Doge, but enough to where I would have made at least 10x with it. And yeah, I just, uh, I got out too early. Yeah, yeah. And and I'm just looking at that. And this is before Shiba launched and was listed on Coinbase. And, oh, you know, man, we're yeah. looking at, it's like, what did we say? If I could go back in time, what would you do? I'd buy a whole bunch of Bitcoin. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's. These are the answers you get these days. We look at these charts and say, oh, I wish I would have, or if I got in early. That's how you seem to make money in this space. So um, I'm just trying, trying to kind of get in where I know, hey, if you're early enough and then this project becomes successful, if it's a good team and it's a good coin and yeah. they, they are laser focused on what they need to do, you can get to the point where, hey, if you're in early enough, you're going to be set for life, man. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Well, why don't you tell me about your background before uh, Corsac? My background before Corsac, I've got about nine or 10 years in the commercial insurance industry. So I worked for a large commercial insurance broker. Um, I'm from the Midwest, um, moved to the Southeast about three years ago, four years ago. Um Went to the University of Kansas, got my bachelor's degree in economics. Yeah, I saw your Kansas logo on your uh, Telegram one, so I figured you went there. Yeah, yeah, I got to I gotta rock the Jayhawk where I can. You know? Well, you know what? My boy Joel Embiid, I'm from Philly, so uh, he's a Jayhawk. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. But, yeah, that's, that's kind of my business-oriented background, uh, you know, it, it's provided a good foundational um, piece to my life and where I feel like I can be successful in business. You know, you, you, you get into enough 
C-suite experiences with Fortune 500 companies. It kind of gives you a thick skin as far as you know what you what you need to know and how you need to function in a high level business environment. Definitely, man. That's definitely that's definitely important. So, why don't you tell me how did Corsac Token get started? So, what was like the catalyst to you know get this token started? I think from the developer's point of view, the the he wanted to emulate the success of Shiba Inu, but without being a meme coin. Right. You know. Right. There's there's always this there was always this issue. There's a lot of issues in crypto, but this was the issue that kind of I think he was concerned about is while there's this coin, it's blowing up. Uh, it's a lot of hype and it's making people money. But where's the utility? There is no. Right? utility. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. And, you know, I remember when I was invested in that coin, that's the same thing that came across my mind. I'm like, well, there's no utility, but I'm going to ride the wave, you know, and it was one of my first really big times hitting it and, you know, being successful in any kind of project. But I'm like, yeah, there's no utility here. And, you know, when you're in one of those, you have to watch that every day, mm -hmm. every hour. You're always like checking your phone. You're you kind of like get glued and addicted to this stuff. You do. And it, it, it can, it can be addicting. It can be problematic in some ways. I mean, you, you you almost, you go to sleep. And then you say, I hope I don't wake up to a crash. <laughs> yeah. yeah, isn't that? You know true? what I mean? Yeah. yeah we, we've and all been there. That part of the, it's part of the benefit we have that I see with these reflection tokens and the finance merchant is because the, the, the stress is off of the investor and it's off of you and me if you were involved because you can say, I'm not really so concerned whether the price fluctuates up and down because I'm getting reflections and I'm invested in this coin so that I get passive income. That's now become the new purpose of the coin. Yeah, absolutely. It's been exciting, uh, you know, since Safe Moon, you know, Evergrow, you know, kind of were some of the pioneers of these reflection tokens. Now, I mean, it's it's just been a revelation. It seems like this is going to be, you know, last year was the year of the meme tokens and coins. This year is going to be the year of the uh, reflection tokens, it seems like. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I just think that there's, there's still a lot Sorry, to come with this. Yeah. Oh, Siri getting involved. There's still a lot to be done in this space. And I think there's still a lot that we can learn and we can, uh, there's ways to grow. So I'm, I'm excited for what the future holds. Awesome. That's the point. So let me ask you, what has been your greatest challenge so far that you didn't expect or plan for with the launch? Oh, that's a great question. Um, to me, it's been a learning experience of what what you're doing to make an impact and what you're doing that has no impact. Um, there's also the the component, as far as I'm concerned, that you know you're learning about how these different levers work. You know. Like where does the where does the social media component interject with the website component, and you know where do the utilities come in, and how how important are those to investors versus the investors that want uh, just the reflections? Um, maintaining momentum is yeah, extremely yeah. important. That's the hardest, um, you know that's the hardest part I've noticed with reflection tokens is you know they'll launch and they'll have just a huge pump and hype and then if they don't have utilities ready to roll and start you know bringing in you know profit and you know money that you know investors can get very very uh, weary very quick of that and start jumping ship to the next you know one that's coming out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it, it's battling that. And yeah, you're absolutely right. The, maintaining the momentum and continuing momentum is very difficult and challenging uh, because it's always a snowball effect one way or the other. So you just got to kind of try to keep that flywheel moving in the right direction. So what do you think the formula is to keep that going in the right direction? Uh, you know, because I know a lot of, you know, tokens have had that issue of, you know, launching and then dropping 90 percent and then kind of slowly starting to, you know, build back up. What do you think the key is to, you know, keeping it, you know, at that, you know, fever pitch of, uh, you know, excitement? Uh, so far with me, um, 
you know, a lot of times when I look at the space of where people start to lose momentum is um, getting too quiet. And um, a big key component of just business in general is managing expectations, right? So it, it has to be at the forefront of where we're managing investors and potential investors' expectations. You know, do they expect it to go X? one x 50 x a million yeah. or do we expect a nice steady upstream do they expect a, sp a certain utility to be launched um if that utility is launched are they expecting a certain return or a certain uh benefit from their you know investment or use of that utility so to me it is a balance of managing those expectations in terms of what are they getting the benefit out of and managing the expectations of what they feel you should be working on, right? Yeah. Because both of those avenues are going to intersect and either create a successful coin to keep that momentum going forward, or it could potentially go backward. Yeah, absolutely. You're hundred percent right with it. We'll lighten it up with the next question. Why don't you tell everybody okay. what is a, what's a passion of yours that is not crypto related? Oh, uh, you know, uh, definitely just, tooling around and uh the, the youtube video that our youtube channel that i have you know uh when i'm getting in small engines repairing those you know what one of my things is to find this outdoor power equipment and really hope usually it's best when it's like abandoned or left for dead or really yeah. cheap and then just going through and bringing it back to life, you know, because there's a benefit. There's so many benefits there from my point of view. A, I enjoy it. B, um, you're creating something that allows somebody who may also be in that particular situation if they own this piece of equipment. And now they may be learning things that helps them keep it going or fixing it. Yeah. And another thing is I'm able to keep that. It's one more piece of equipment I'm able to keep out of a landfill. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm a big uh, Forged and Fire fan. I don't know if uh, you watch that show at all. Uh -uh. I don't think I'm familiar with that one. Really? Oh, my God. You would love it. Basically, they get uh, you know people and they do different competitions where they have to forge different weapons and just uh, it's great. If you if you haven't watched oh, it, wow. yet, okay. you know, check it out. You'll become addicted very, very quick to it. <laughs> OK, OK. Yeah, there's there's two that I'm pretty big fans of. There's one, his name is Musty One, and he does basically exactly what I talked about. That the guy's probably way better than me. And then uh, there's another guy. Um, I can't think of his name at this exact moment, but uh, basically he'll go anywhere in the country, find some complete POS car that yeah. you would think there's no way that thing's going to be doing anything, and he just somehow gets it running and then drives it a few hundred miles back home. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That's cool. I watched uh, some of that American Pickers show too, and where they go around all around, you know, getting all kinds of stuff that you would just think is absolute junk and, you know, going to get thrown away and they're paying just hundreds of dollars for it. You wouldn't believe it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Well, that's good. I'm going to, this is a little bit more serious question. So I want to ask you this Do you think that regulation is good or bad for the crypto industry and why? Um, so that's a big question. I think that regulation is good, uh, as long as it is something that can benefit the protection and security of the consumer and the investor, right? but not, not get in the way of the free market. Right. So, so there's a balance. There's always a balance. I don't believe in Anything is black and white. I'm right. kind of like everything is gray, you know, so um, that's that's kind of my take on it. So that's that's something that we battle, especially I feel like in the BSC space. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of rug pulls. There's a lot of scams. And, you know, in the crypto world, everybody's really protective of their little their little coin bag and they don't want you shilling. And if you talk about another coin, they kick you out of the group and ban you and all that other stuff. And I'm yeah. like. I see that to some degree, but, you know, that's part of what I hope makes us successful in the future is I don't really care about all that. You know, I don't, if Safe Moon comes in or Ever Reflect comes in or any of these guys come in, if you're bringing positive vibes and you want to work with us and we want to work with you, I'm all for that. You know, the, 
the biggest detriment and the biggest problem we face is bad regulation and scams out there that give crypto in general a bad name. Yeah, we're going to be talking that that's actually one of my further questions that we're going to cover in a few minutes here, but I uh, I talked about this. I don't know if you know EJ over at Ever Reflect the CEO. Have you uh have you met him yet? We've had some light interactions on Telegram, so yeah, he's, getting, a, he, getting he's an absolutely awesome dude. And we were talking about this very thing yesterday, and we were kind of, you know, at the point where he's saying, you know, it's kind of scary that the government, you know, may step in with this, you know, not really truly knowing what they're doing and what the blockchain is all about, and that you know we should have some sort of delegation or delegate to kind of represent us instead of them just, you know completely steamrolling us with, you know, what they think should be done. You know, we should have some representation with it as well, with regulation. Yeah, yeah, I, I 100% agree with that. Um, you know, in terms of regulation, again, you know, it's, it's what can be done to present, protect investors and consumers from getting scammed and rug pulled. I, I'm 100% for that. You know, if there's certain regulations that need to be done as, as far as, uh, verification and, um, you know, certain levels of doxing and background checks and right. things need to be registered with a certain federal registry. I'm, I'm actually all for that. Uh, generally, my perspective on the government, most governments are like this. I know it's this way in the United States is as long as they're able to make money off of it and it doesn't affect them negatively in a political light, they're probably going to let you do what you want to do. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's funny you were saying that because I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but tomorrow night uh, they're doing something called uh, DeFi United, and it's going to be with uh, some of the guys from Reflex, Ever Reflect, BUSD Buffet, and uh, Meta BUSD. And there's going to be some, you know, big social media influences at influencers in it as well, and they're going to be you know, talking about how they can, you know, work together and, you know, partner up to, you know, clean up the uh, industry and just kind of work together instead of everybody just out for themselves. And that's, it's really something exciting. I'm going to be live streaming it on my channel. So at some point, you know, check it out. It's definitely uh, something that's pretty exciting that's coming up. Yeah, definitely. Well, definitely. Well, thanks for uh, the heads up on that. Yeah, definitely. All right. So the next question I wanted to ask you is, so what is the end game or goal that Corsac wants to accomplish? Like, what is your main thing that you guys want to accomplish and bring to crypto? Um, I think it's hard to be too much of a differentiator in this space. Um, it's kind of like the NFL. Once you innovate something, everybody's going to copy it, right? Absolutely. It's a, it's a copycat. It's a copycat space, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, one guy innovates, the other guys copy it. If it's a good thing, it spreads. Um, I guess for our laser focus is just making sure that we're putting at the forefront, or forefront of, of what we're trying to do and focus on is what's best for the coin, what's best for the community, and you know what's best for everybody that's an investor in the, in the, in the crypto space is specifically for, for Corsac. So, awesome. um, it, it's, it's our goal actually to be the proof of concept that the little guy can make it. Awesome. Um, I know there's, a bit, I know there's been other ones out there, but you ask anybody in our community in about two weeks ago, you know, people thought we were kind of just dead in the water and it, it wasn't necessarily our fault. I mean, market timing is a big thing. Yeah, and everything was down. I mean, everything's been in the red the last few weeks. So, yeah, you guys are having a hell of a run today. In the last couple of days, you know, I've been following your chart and it's been uh, it's been really going skyward. Yeah, once once we got our our new dev team really in coordination and set up, which happened to ride around uh, the ninth, you can go ahead and you can look at our chart. Um, since that's gone on, we have increased well over 750% in a week, less than a week. That's amazing. So that's, it's incredible growth. It's incredible gains, but we still have a lot to do just because, you know, growth is the name of the game. And, you know, when, when you, when you're our size, you're fighting for things like getting your logo on a trust wallet. You know what I mean? And it's yeah, just this absolutely. little tiny yeah. stuff. 
that's a big accomplishment when you can get that. You know, you have to have what is it like ten thousand hold or something like that. Exactly, exactly. So you know, it it's it's difficult to get there and. You know, once you already have 20,000 holders, you know, you feel like you've made it. Yeah. Uh, and I get that. But sometimes these other guys get, you know, when you're first starting out, especially in this climate, it there's so many others out there. It's really tough to make yourself stand out. And I'm just like, you know, I, I want to make ourselves stand out as being we are legitimate. We are here to keep our investors at the forefront. And we are here to make you notice it by our chart. Yeah, you know, I'm out there. I want to sell the chart. People looking, people are looking at the chart. If the chart looks good, they will come. Absolutely. Well, this next question kind of goes back to something you touched upon a little bit earlier. What do you think can be done to clean up the number of scam projects and rug pulls with all these new BEP20 tokens? Um, that's a great question. I don't know enough admittedly on the back end technical side i don't know how much of that needs to be government or regulatory interference um or how much of that needs to be finance i don't know how much control they have over uh you know once one of these developers sets up a coin on their blockchain, how much control they have over what they can and can't do with these smart contracts. Yeah, it, you know, it, it's not a whole lot, to be honest with you. What I really, truly think it comes down to is a lot of these companies that have launch pads. Are they vetting the projects enough to, you know, make sure that they're not rug pulls and scams, you know, beforehand? I, I don't know if you know of uh, DGEM. Do you know? Are you familiar with them? No. Yeah, they're a um, they're a company that uh, just came out not too long ago, and the, one of their big things that they're doing is they have a premium launch pad that they're offering to where they vet every single company that applies to launch their product, you know, to make sure they do like a complete financial audit on them, ask them, you know, all these different questions to make sure that you know they're not going to be a rug pull or a scam. And I think that's what it kind of comes down to is accountability with, you know, some of the projects that are launching these tokens. You know, sometimes they care, sometimes they don't. So if we can get more, I think that, you know, care that can hopefully, you know, clean it up a little bit. But it, it's hard. It's hard for sure. It is. It is. It's very difficult. So, um, you know, again, like I said, I don't know how much of that can be, be done privately. I don't know how effective some of the private governance would be versus, you know, uh, governmental governments. Yeah. Uh, but you know, it's, it's an interesting question. Um, right now I don't have necessarily the answer other than, you know, if, if, if these need to be registered and, uh, something needs to be done as far as, uh, a federal database or something with that, with the, with whoever's involved in the team, yeah, it, it could be that way. You know, I had to register my fingerprints and all that other jazz when I, went for TSA pre-check application, you know, yeah. so <laughs> they, they have certain records on me and, you know, there's only so much I could get away with. Absolutely. I like asking point, that question that because there really isn't an answer to it. So I, I like kind of hearing everybody's input on it because it's not really something that there really is a true answer for. So that's why I kind of like hearing what everybody uh, has to say as far as that goes. Um, as the next question, uh, so how can Corsac make it easier for new investors that may be intimidated by, you know, how difficult crypto is to, you know, get in when you're new to it? How can how can Corsac make it easier for new investors to get involved with crypto? You know, that's a great question. Uh, I have a lot of folks. It kind of goes back to that, you know, new age of the Internet. Thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I've heard about the Internet. How do I get on the Internet? You know, so. I think you have these certain massive exchanges, centralized exchanges like a crypto.com or Coinbase or some of these, and it makes it easy for you. your guy that doesn't know a whole lot about it. He can just kind of trade it like a simple stock on yeah. Robin Hood and everything is good, right? And then you have this uh, deck space like we're in. And, you know, it, when I'm trying to explain people, hey, you know, you might want to look at this Corsac. It's been performing really well. I highly recommend it. You could make some good money off reflections and passive income, and that's what everybody wants. Okay, that's great. How do I do that? Well, you got to go download a wallet. Do you have a wallet? Well, no. Okay, we'll do this. And then, you know, oh, okay, I got my wallet set up, I think. How do I do that? Well, 
Then you got to go to this site called Pancake Swap. Okay, how do I do yeah. that? Well, it's just this pain in the butt. And I'm like, and, and the other part is I'm sitting here. I'm like, well, how do I buy it? I'm like, well, you got to get BNB. Well, I'm in the United States and there's, I'm not going to get into the state thing, but like I'm in the United States. Well, register, you want it cheap and easy or do you want it expensive and easier? And it's like, okay, well, you can buy it directly through the wallet because you need BNB to do any of this stuff. And then you go on and you sign up for a Binance.us account and you have to wait 10 days for this stuff to clear. Yep. So, uh, you know, that's that's the majority of the complaints because this this space moves so fast it where does. people want to eat a dip or they want to or they see it move in one way or another. They need to be able to trade and buy and sell really quickly, especially the buys, you know, and. It, it becomes really frustrating with that with that bottleneck of obtaining the BNB to do anything on this finance smart chain of the decentralized. It, it, it is, you know, not that long ago, I wrote out the steps from for for a uh, company I was working with to uh, you know transfer from Coinbase to another wallet to Trust Wallet to Pancake Swap to this and that. I mean, and what after I wrote out all the steps, it was insane to me. I like I looked at it. I was just like, my God, nobody that's new is going to be able to follow this. And oh yeah, by the way, if you make a mistake anywhere along the way, you lose your money. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the that's the other part. You could lose your money, and then every little middle middleman or miner or Coinbase have to get their little cut of every time yep. that moves. Mm -hmm. And then by the time you're done, you might have like only seventy five percent or less yep. of what you were trying to deal with in the first place. So uh, yeah, that's not that's even counting. That's not even counting slippage, which you know people are like, "What?" Yeah, exactly. So I think that's a big thing: is how can we make the decentralized exchange buy and sell process easier and more intuitive? You know, how do I obtain BNB much more easily? How can I? I know you can buy it within your wallet. It's still kind of a pain and they have all their fees and all that other stuff. And then on top of that, you know, the pancake swap exchange, if somehow that could be integrated into a wallet, um, you know, just anything to make this process easier and remove the bottlenecks and remove the pain is just going to really help this take off because then I can re recommend this stuff to people and I don't have to go through a 50 step process of how to get it done. Do you have any plans in the future at Corsac that to have a direct buy button from a fiat currency on your website? I think once we have the ability to do things in that space of that nature, we will definitely be looking into it because the easier that it is yeah. to become an investor, the more investors we can get. Nothing truer has ever been said on crypto. <laughs> All right, so we're th this one's going to be a little bit easier. So, what dinner would you choose as your final meal? Oh man, <laughs> now, I'm from Philly. Uh, I'm a I'm from Philly, and I'm a big eater. So, with my cheesesteaks and Italian sausage and roast pork sandwiches, so I always like to hear everybody from all over the country what they have to say with this one. Okay, um, man, it always depends because I'm always in the mood for a different meal based on what I had. A day or two ago. Um, you know, I, I think that you just can't go wrong with a really, really good, uh, you know, seafood Italian meal. Yeah. Yeah. You I know, whether had, that's I, I just had French scallops and Alfredo last night, so you don't got to convince me on that one. Exactly. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, let's see here. So why don't you tell me about you guys' plans for the NFT marketplace? So the NFT marketplace is set up, um, and I, I think it is fairly intuitive, um, pretty user friendly, and it it's pretty in a way that matches our theme on the rest of the website. Right. Um, the goal with our NFT website is to get a little bit closer to that step to where we want folks that do not hold Corsac to be able to use our NFT website and exchange. So we are adding more and more coins to be able to inter interface with our NFT marketplace. And that's, that's really where our goal is, is heading. Um, as far as 
is that a standout? I think so. Um, you know, that, that space is currently evolving. You know, there are coins that are a lot bigger than us that are still quote unquote working on it. Mm -hmm. Um, that's kind of been a little bit of our struggle is getting utilities like our NFT marketplace, uh, finished and done before we were really marketing. So you're kind of, it's, a metaphor we were kind of eating ramen noodles for a long time while we were trying to get this going you know what i mean absolutely but uh, but you know i i think that that that's a little bit of our angle to go for um i think that the nft marketplace space as a whole is it'll be interesting what direction it goes um i don't know if you saw did you see that those covid episodes of south park no i i haven't actually Oh yeah, I have to see it. It's got butters uh, as an oh, adult, yeah, and he's butters. trying. He's trying to sell everybody NFTs. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, they're going to take that South Park angle at it and everything. And I'm like thinking about it. I'm like, yeah, they're not wrong. I mean, you're going to spend three hundred thousand dollars on a picture. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised they didn't have a cartoon version of Gary V on it too. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I'm like. You know, I, I see where they're going with it, and I'm not going to sit here and argue with them. Say that's not true, but a whole lot of pieces. How is that space going to evolve to where it does become a very important utility in the um, online crypto meta space? Yeah, I think it has a huge application in the meta space, especially. I mean, that's really something in the next year or two that's really, I think, going to just completely bust out. Exactly, because it's going to it's going to once it gets to the point where a really good use case application is created beyond little gift stickers and stuff and, you know, whatever you make in Microsoft Paint, once it gets to real stuff that we're actually digitally signing as non fungible tokens, I think is where this really becomes something that that we can we can say, wow, that's that's actually that's going to take off and move forward. Well, the guys that ever reflect in Meta BUSD, they just entered a partnership. And basically what it is going to be is the tickets are going to be NFT tickets to live events within the uh, metaverse. And so you can actually purchase a ticket and attend a concert from your own house. And, you know, it's like you're there with your VR, you know, goggles on and, and then you have a collectible afterwards that you can, uh, you know, hang on to. You can sell it. You can stake it. You know, so there's there's definitely some really exciting applications that uh, guys are really, you know, moving forward with it. So uh, it's definitely exciting to see all the creative uses that are going to come out in the next, uh, you know, five ten years. Yeah, definitely. I think I think from our point of view, I'm also looking at it as outside. How do we connect the real world with the digital one? You right. know. Um, the metaverse is new. I don't know how much of it's, I'm sure it's the future. That's great. I think I'm more concerned with how are we going to apply NFTs to tangible items that yeah. we can see, uh, right? So I'm almost looking at it as, could this be leveraged as some kind of, uh, what would you say, uh, patent? You know, this is something that is tracked as a genuine item. Yeah. So I'm, I'm digitally signing it to you and giving you the receipt uh, of patent, if you will, for whatever it is I'm selling and giving to you. And if that somehow matches something that is in the real world, I think that it makes it much easier to, uh, you know, assign that. So like, let's say I have a Rolex watch, it's worth a lot of money. If I can somehow get the serial number, the information and everything you need to that item, Absolutely. digitally signed in an NFT, then if that's an accepted mode of verification, then I can sell that NFT to somebody and it's almost like giving them the watch and they have a permanent digital certificate on the blockchain for that valuable item. Mm-hmm. So that's where I see this NFT space going for. I think it's a huge value add. That's awesome. It's exciting stuff. All right. We've made it to our final question here. And you, I, whether you've watched my other video or not, you may or may not know what's coming, but I am going to hit you with this. So uh, if you had to pick one fictional, literary, or historical figure, who would you fight? <laughs> uh, man, I'm going to go to South Park a little bit. I think I'd have to fight Mickey Mouse. <laughs> really? Yeah, I mean, you see him in the South Park. I mean... The- 
guy's kind of a badass. I would just like to see how he threw down, you know? Nice. Awesome. I love hearing everybody's answers to these questions. <laughs> it, it, it's one of those disarming <laughs> questions that you don't see coming and you're like, well, wait a second. All right, let me think about this. And then probably in 10 minutes, you'll be like, damn, I should have said this. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Grant, for uh, joining me tonight on a uh, short notice. Uh, this was definitely a lot of fun. We got a lot of information out. We got some laughs and, uh, I think uh, everybody in the community especially is going to enjoy this. And, you know, for people that are potential investors, you know, they'll see what a down to earth guy you are and, you know, how fun and exciting the community is. And uh, I can't thank you enough and tell you how, how excited I am about your project. Yeah, definitely, Mike. I appreciate it. And uh, thank you. I, I really enjoyed it. All right, guys, that's going to conclude another uh, episode of Dirty Mike's Dirty Dozen video. Thank you guys for joining me again tonight, and uh, we'll be back uh, probably tomorrow with another one. Thanks, guys.